Continuing to keep you updated on the Micah Francis and John Paul Miller case, I got a lot of information for you today, including, yes, finally, an arrest has been made in this case. Now we're talking over, you know, over two and a half months now, about two and a half months into this. We're going to talk about that. Also, we're going to get more into the supposed mental health issues of Micah herself, some new information released about that. And also, something that I really wanted to talk about, I appreciate those that brought this to my attention, you know who you are, but Jesse Duplantis teaming up with J.P. Miller, speaking at Solid Rock at Market Common. This was back in January, a lot of interesting things said by Jesse, and well, I had a particular interest in this because I am somebody who has met Jesse Duplantis, had lunch with the guy, I got my own story with him, uh, which I've talked about before, but we do have a lot of, of, of new subscribers here to the channel, so I'm going to revisit that story for you here in this because it just ties in so much uh, with what Jesse said at Solid Rock. So we're going to get into all of that here, but before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes. Blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. Speaking of that, for those interested, you want to know my story. How did I go blind? How do I operate my entire ministry without being able to see? I made a video that explains it all. You will find a link to that in the description section of all my videos. And if you really enjoy and appreciate my work and you would like to contribute with a donation to help me out, a few different ways you could do that. One, by hitting the super thanks button on the YT video or join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews, link in the description. You guys wanna get access to all of these videos before they hit the main YT platform? Well, when you join my Patreon, that's exactly what you are going to get, along with a bunch of other cool features. I hope you'll check it out and join me. Again, it's patreon.com slash notbysightnews. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so, thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciate it. Let's kick things off right away by talking about this arrest that was finally made. I want to start with this. We've been talking about it now since June 30th. I have covered it extensively. Robert Lochelle, the congregant at Solid Rock at Market Common, who grabbed that sprinkler and started spraying the protesters with it back on June 30th. Now, we talked about how there were Five charges that were filed here against Lachelle in that week after this incident took place. And I said at the time, and many others did too, this looked like absolute assault against these protesters. And that's exactly what it was. But why did it take so long for this arrest to happen? You know, there was Lachelle, and we're going to get into some things about Lachelle, some, some information about him that maybe you did not know and that might explain his loyalty here to JP. But I covered this in a previous video. There may have been some of you that missed that video. I put it out really late on, on Sunday, July 7th. So some of you may have not have gotten an alert from YT on the video. Uh, so let me recap for you because, yes, the protests continued at Solid Rock on Sunday, July 7th. But it was one of the most, you know, one of the most police presences that they've had at these protests since the very beginning, uh, including barricades that were set up. Police were wanting to make sure that we did not have, you know, a repeat of what happened the week before or, God forbid, something worse taking place. Now, thankfully, thankfully, uh, there, there was, you know, nothing like what happened the week prior, that there were no, you know, other incidents, no other physical altercations, nothing like that took place. Thankfully, there was one individual who reportedly did receive a citation, I think, um, based off them using the blow horns, you know, I guess some of the protesters have been, you know, told before that they can't do that. Of course, I always welcome anybody, if you attend these protests, you can always give us your insight, your thoughts um, in the comment section, you know, as I, as I do these videos. Uh, so, you know, again, we did not have any physical altercations. JP was there. Yes, he exited out the back of the church. Again, he was seen getting into his truck, but he was talking to police a lot during the course of uh, the events that took place on July 7th. Now, clips from the service showed, uh, again, JP talking to police, but police telling protesters that Robert Lachelle would in fact be arrested at the conclusion of Solid Rock's service. 
However, that did not happen. They told them that it would. Lachelle was actually seen leaving church after it was over, much like JP, exiting out of the back of the church, getting into his own vehicle, and driving away. So what exactly happened here with the arrest? Well, there were clips that were shown out there of police telling protesters that, well, things have changed. You see, Robert Lachelle is a an 81-year-old, 81-year-old, frail old man who has health problems, and they were concerned that if they arrested him right there, brought him into a jail, that he could have a health issue, an emergency, and then have to go to a a hospital. And all this this didn't make any sense, because because first of all, Robert Lachelle is not 81. He's 67, and he's not frail. I mean, he was able to pick up a sprinkler and spray the protesters the week before. He was able to bend down, pick it up, aim it at them. So I, I don't know how that's considered frail. And again, he's 67. He's not 81. How did police not know about this? Again, if they had they had five arrest warrants already in their possession, how did they not have the information about Lachelle and mix up his age? Was it JP that was telling them that, oh, he's 81, he's frail? G- give him a little bit more time, you know, wait till the next day. In fact, that's what they said. Police told protesters that r- they talked to Lachelle, he was going to be turning himself in on the morning of July 8th. And if that did not take place, well, then they would go pick him up himself. So what's the difference if the police picking him up the next day as opposed to arresting him right there at Solid Rock at the conclusion of the service. I thought that would have been quite a spectacle if they would have led this guy out in handcuffs at Solid Rock Church. Wouldn't that have been something? They said they were going to do it. You know, would that have just, you know, caused even more, you know, speculation, you know, that, that Solid Rock was crooked and everything with JP? I don't know. But turns out, in fact, that, you know, again, I talked about this in my other video. You know, why give this guy extra time? You know, what time would this abide? You know, what was going to be taking place between Lachelle and JP? Were they going to be, I don't know. I'm just speculating here. I don't know for a fact. Gathering up information? I don't know. But uh, we do now have an update that, in fact, yes, Robert Lachelle did, in fact, turn himself in to police and was arrested in the early morning hours of Monday, July 8th. In fact, he turned himself in at 7.40 a.m. Eastern Time, On Monday morning, July 8th, he was arrested promptly upon turning himself in, and he is facing five misdemeanor charges here for what he did with the sprinkler. Now, do I think that he's going to be serving any jail time? I don't know. I highly doubt it. I would be very surprised. Uh, We we know with this third degree salt charge, uh, you know, he's looking at, you know, a a fine here, you know, up to potentially $500 in fines. Uh, he could get 30 days in jail. That's another part of this. But again, I just, I don't think that he's going to. If he does, then okay, cool. Uh, but again, this is the first arrest since uh, Micah's unfortunate loss here, since she lost her life back on, on April 27th. Uh, there's going to be more, okay? there's gonna, The FBI is still investigating this. But this is a bad look for Solid Rock because now you have a member from their own church who has been arrested. And look, this this church has already been painted in a negative light, and rightfully so, for everything that we've seen from JP. So again, something to follow. I'll keep you updated on any more developments as far as Lachelle goes, and if he's going to be, you know, actually facing jail time or not. Let me move on to the next, my next uh, point here that I want to talk about, and that is uh, Micah's mental health. There was a new video that was released by Robbie Harvey, who has done a great job This case, I I use him as a source. I have no problem mentioning his name or telling people to go check him out if you haven't done so already. But in this video, Robbie talks about how he has gained new evidence, new information here into Micah's mental health. And actually, he got some information straight from J.P. Miller himself. But before we even get into that, let's talk about here where this all started. Because in fact, I didn't know about this previously, but apparently... JP and Micah didn't get married just once. They got married twice. Now, we know about the wedding that took place on New Year's Eve in 2017. But what you don't know is that, and I didn't know this, was that they apparently got married for the first time in early December of that same month. Now, this was just days before, apparently, uh, Micah was set to get, you know, that that top surgery. You know, we, we talked about that. Now, the two of them had said that apparently they wanted to get married before Micah had the surgery because they didn't want to be living in sin. Okay. 
I don't know. Look, and I'm not going to speculate what may or may not have been going on between the. Look, we, we kind of know how their relationship started, right? Um, and that's what led to the divorce of of JP and, and Allison and also Micah and her first husband, Jeremy. So that's what they said here. But, you know, so that they get, they have that, that smaller wedding and then Micah has the surgery. We know everything took a turn after that surgery, right? And JP claims that this is when, you know, the mental health issues for Micah started was, was after that surgery. But what it really was that, that sparked this was, in fact, Micah having a hallucination from the anesthesia that she had to undergo from the surgery. JP had even, this is stuff that Micah's family had even said before as well. But, you know, JP claims that, you know, Micah had a hallucination after, the, you know, from the anesthesia and was speaking three languages, had woke up and started speaking three different languages and and, and how, you know, this this is really when the, the labels of, you know, bipolar 2 and schizophrenia and all these things started to come on her. But when Robbie Harvey had asked JP for the medical records, because remember, JP was going to present us with all this evidence, right? 350 pieces of evidence into, you know, who was really responsible for Micah's death. But JP said that he didn't have the medical records. In fact, he was still waiting for them to come in. And that a lot of this of what has happened is, is a blur to him. What does that mean? But you've been talking about all this evidence for so long, but where is it? And again, he surprisingly, and even Robbie Harvey said it, reached out to him, provided this information. But not only that, about, you know, the, the hallucination. And if that's really what this all was, if that's all it was, was just her having a, a hallucination, a reaction to the anesthesia? Can you really consider this woman to have had mental health problems? I mean, look, we've all said from the beginning that it didn't add up, right? It didn't add up. But when you take a look at JP, mental issues with him sure did add up on that end. He was the one from the pulpit talking about having demons and being on 900 milligrams of lithium and having to meet with all these pastors and counselors, you know, to, to deal with his unforgiveness and his bitterness and his hatred and all these things that he was carrying around with him. He said these things from the pulpit. It's undeniable. So as far as Micah goes, I don't know. I don't know. But here's something else that was interesting that Robbie brought up. He received actual photos, actual, you know, photo evidence of Micah's medication. But this was the interesting point of this. And, uh, you know, you guys can watch Robbie's video on this if you want to. You can watch it in full. But one of the particular medications had a double label on it. Now, that is something that you do not see you know you're not going to see a pharmacist you know you know particularly put a double label on a, on a medication so why was that you know there's been all sorts of speculation about crooked things going on here behind the scenes you know and there being links with you know charles randall the mental hospital and you know his, his wife working at one and him being on the board and all these things but but a double label why is that what what, what does that mean right what does that mean now, apparently there was also uh, another label that was on the side of one of the medications that, and, and Robbie had, had asked JP if he could, you know, you know, provide a, a closer look at that, you know, get, get a picture of that, a little bit of a closer look, but he didn't do that. He didn't, he didn't respond to that inquiry that Harvey had. So now it really looks suspicious as to, you know, Micah having mental health issues. But remember, JP had talked this entire time about how he needed to get her medicine. She needed her medicine. But we've been saying this from the beginning that, you know, this was seemingly forced upon her. She didn't want to take this. It was doing all sorts of crazy things to her, uh, you know, causing causing more problems than, than it needed to be. And, and look, it was it was that medication that was probably making her, you know, you know, feel the things that, that she was. She needed to be on that stuff. But it was JP talking about how he needed his lithium. But then he turned around and said, no, it was Micah. She didn't need, she needs a lithium. She needs to take her proper doses and all these things. So th this, again, we're getting more information that's now unfolding in this case that just, just, again, I just, my opinion on this, I don't think that Micah was somebody that, that suffered from these mental issues. Remember, her own family had stated multiple times that at no point in her life, Prior to meeting JP, prior to the wedding, did she ever have a mental health struggle? Never did. Never. I'll let you let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section. But let me move on to my final point here, Jesse Duplantis, because, man, and again, I, I thank those that brought this to my attention. 
Yeah, I got. I, I I know Jesse Duplantis. Uh, I'll get to that in a second. But Jesse apparently preached at Solid Rocket Market Common back in January. Now, how he knows John Paul and, and how that relationship is, I, I don't know. Um, I can tell you this. Uh, and by, by the way, I will provide a link for you in the description of this video. You can watch some of the clips from the service. There were some very interesting things that were said. L let me talk about that first, and then I'll get to my story with Jesse. I'll, I'll kind of close out with that. The recurring theme throughout this message was, and, and look, you can't be surprised when you're talking about, I've talked about Jesse Duplantis plenty of times before, the prosperity gospel, the money, money, money. Yeah, that was a recurring theme here throughout this sermon. In fact, Jesse takes basically the first 10 minutes of the service to talk about his books. I, I brought my books, some books here, and, and I know all about this too because I've been in services with him uh, where he's done that. And, and I look, I've been to the Kenneth Copeland conventions too. I wish I wasn't, but you know, I, I was blinded for a long time. I'm a, not talking about my physical sight, which I am, but I was spiritually blinded too. Not anymore. Uh, but you know, yeah, I've been to Kenneth Copeland conventions with Jesse there. Jesse's come to, the, to my to the churches that I was a part of before. I'll talk more on that in a minute. But yeah, first ten minutes of this service with JP at Solid Rock. Jesse's talking about. I brought some books with me. You can get these here. And he's talking about his DVDs. It was all promotion for the for the guy. And look, I don't have a problem. Look, I want people to understand. I got no problem if you have a ministry and that you're you're asking people for donations. I ask people for donations, right? If they want to, you know, but but it's it's out of the goodness of their heart. It's not, I'm not attaching a prosperity gospel message to, you know, to this when I ask you guys if you want to help me out through either a super thanks on YT or through my Patreon. I'm just saying if you want to do it out of the goodness of your heart, if you enjoy what I do here and you want to support me, that's all I say. I'm not telling you that, well, if you do it, you know, God's going to richly bless you in this. I'm not saying that. That's between you and the Lord. I believe God can bless everybody, but I'm not attaching a false gospel to it or trying to use fear in order to get people to give. That's not what I'm doing. But that's what these mega church pastors and these, you know, these prosperity gospel preachers do, right? They need more and more. These are multi-millionaires here, but they can never get enough. So yeah, it was all self-promotion for his books. And then he he gets into more about money. He talks about Mike. He brings Micah up. You'll see it in the clip. And he's saying, even asking Micah, Micah, do you need some money? And then, and then JP, you know, chimes in by saying, oh, no, no, she's good. She don't need nothing. She's good. Everybody in the church is laughing. Everybody's laughing about it, you know. And, and then Jesse starts talking about the mafia. Now, this is, I've heard this before from him, but, you know, he talks about, you know, growing up in New Orleans, Nolens, Nolens, right? That's how you say, you gotta say Nolens, Nolens. <laughs> and, um, you know, growing up with the mafia and, he, and, he, and he's making, and look, you know, you've heard Jesse's story, you know, how he, you know, he was a rocker and, you know, he was into all the, you know, the substances, if you know what I mean. He talked about, you know, you know, his trip to heaven and look, there's people that don't believe there's some people that don't believe that, that he's just been using that as a tool throughout his entire time in ministry to gain more money. And that might be true, but you know, he even made a, a, a remark here about how he knows how to hide a body. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh, yeah, he make, made a remark. If you ever, you ever need to know, he was telling JP, if you ever want to know how to, you know, hide a body, I'm your guy. Yikes. Yikes. So, uh, yeah, the, the whole thing, and he was talking about his jet and, and how, you know, you know, I was able to get to, you know, here so fast at this, this certain speed that I was going at and just, he, he always talks about this in his sermons. Again, I, I, I've heard them, but you know, how these two got together, I, I don't know, but, but let me say this, if J, if I should say, if Jesse had any real discernment, then he would know that JP Miller would not be in a, a person that you would want to associate yourself with. And look. By that point, we're talking, Jan I believe it was January of 24 uh, that he was there at the church. Um, you know, there was already stuff about JP out there. So why would this guy be coming to this church and, and, and teaming up with this guy, right? That, that's, but, but again, we, we often say that, you know, birds of a feather flock together. Wolves like to, to travel in, in packs. And throughout the, ser the sermon, you're, you know, Jesse and, J and JP are, you know, they're you know, acting all buddy-buddy. They're cracking jokes with one another. Uh, it, it's just a sad display. Uh, it, it really is, you know, but you had everybody there that loves Jesse. It, believe me, I know it because I've been a part of churches where Jesse, you know, came in. It, it's it's always the same theme with him. Promote the books, talk about the money, my jet, 
I'm a wealthy man, right? I got all this money. I, I got, you know, I, the Lord has been so good to me. He's been so good to me over the years. Yeah, just keep on giving. And remember, this is the same guy in Jesse Duplantis. I've talked about this before, but said that, you know, the reason that Jesus hasn't come back yet is because not enough people have given to his ministry. He said that. That's in the sermon. You can go find it. You can go look that up for yourself. And also, when he went to heaven, he says that when he saw Jesus, he was crying. Jesus was crying in heaven, ladies and gentlemen. And he was crying again because not enough people have given to Jesse's ministry. Because I'm sure that's what the Lord is concerning him with in heaven right now. It is concerned with how many people have, you know, given to, to JP or to JP to Jesse's ministry. It, it, it is just sad. But this is the type of manipulation that these guys use. It's sick. It's absolutely sick. Let me get to my story with Jesse. Again, I've shared this before, but we have a lot of new people that may not have heard it. But I was in a church where Jesse was brought in as a guest speaker, not once, but twice. And again, I, I've been to the to Kenneth, Kenneth Copeland conventions as well. I was at the Southwest Believers Convention back in 2012 um, in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, you know, again, Jesse was there too. Um, but, but I've seen him at a previous church of mine twice. Now, he was good friends with a uh, the pastor of mine at the time. I'm not going to mention his name, but... Uh, that's how he was brought in. Now, we were not a, a particularly large church. You know, we had at that time, this was around in 20, I believe it was 2011 and 2012, back-to-back -back years in September, uh, we had Jesse at our church. But he was very good friends with our lead pastor at the time. And that's what brought him in. So, you know, we, we maybe had, you know, we had more people during that, you know, that special service with Jesse than we would have a, on a regular Sunday morning. I mean, in fact, they had to bring in like extra chairs, I remember, uh, we probably had about maybe maybe 200 people. You know, that again, that was way more than what we normally, we'd have maybe, you know, on average, maybe 75 to 100 in any given week. But this was also the same time that I was going through uh, my vision loss. And, and, and I have glaucoma and I was not fully blind yet at this point. You have to understand. I was not fully blind yet. But, uh, you know, uh, talk to the pastor and, and he said, look, we'll, we'll have Jesse pray for you. And, but what we'll do is we'll bring you into my office. We won't have them actually pray for you in the church. We'll sneak you in. And at the time, you guys understand, I, I am fully, you know, blinded uh, by these pastors, right? in the wolves. And, and it was like they were looked upon as, as idols. And, and, and like, they actually had like a curtain and like this, and like a tarp thing that was set up in our church. So that way, you know, Jesse could come in through the side and he wouldn't have to be, you know, you know, bombard, bombarded by people that might want to say hi to him or whatever. Uh, and also, he never would come out during the praise and worship. This is something that I, I just, I can't stand when these big mega preachers come in. You know, they're too good to come out with everybody else during the praise and worship. They hide in the pastor's office because apparently they're trying to get the anointing on them, brother, uh, before they go out to speak, which is, again, it just, it makes it seem like they're above everybody else. And I don't like that. But yeah, they basically snuck me into the pastor's office before service started. Jesse was in there. You know, he was getting ready, you know, and, and, and so I go in there and I, and I, and I meet him. I also had lunch with him, by the way, I'll talk about that in a second, but, uh, you know, they bring me in there and, and then they shut the door again. They had, they had a curtain back to the back offices of the church. So they, they brought me in that way. Um, cause the curtain was like, it was blocking the main entrance to the hallway where the offices were and everything like that. Not the bathrooms. They were on the other side of the church. But yeah, so like nobody was allowed to go. You can't go back behind the black curtain because that's where Jesse is. But look at me. I mean, I was so special. I was able to go back there. Uh, I thought I was at the time, but I wasn't. So they bring me in and I, I meet Jesse. He shakes my hand. He says, I understand you got a little bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to do my best Jesse, boys. Uh, I says, yeah, I'm battling glaucoma. I'm losing vision right now. I'm completely blind in my left eye and I only have about 20% vision left in my right. Now, again, you could hear my full story about going blind. It's I, I always link it in the description. So I'm not going to tell the full story of that right here. You can go listen to that if you want to. But I said, yeah. So I, I tell him about my, you know, it just recently started, you know, got diagnosed with glaucoma. And so he, he prays over me right there in the office, right? You know, he's praying and whatever. And uh, he, he wraps up. He's praying for sight to be restored. By the way, no sight restored. Okay. Jesse didn't have the miracle healing power right there as they snuck me through the black curtain to take me back to the pastor's office to have me have him pray for me. Um, and then he, he, he asked me, he's like, is, is it any better? Has, has the vision, has it started to come back? 
you know, it, has your right eye gotten any better or has any sight begin to be restored to the, for, to the left eye? And I was like, no, sir. No, I didn't say that. Like, I didn't talk in his voice. I says, no, it hasn't. He's like, well, let me tell you a little bit of a story. And then he starts telling me a story about his dad and something that he went through and how, you know, he was, I think it was something about how he was, you know, I forget. It was something like he was either deaf at one point or something. I can't remember. But um, nevertheless, uh, you know, he's like, we well, just keep, you keep the faith and it's going to come. Well, it never came. And I got worse and went fully blind. So, but, you know, I, again, I've met this guy and then we even had lunch. Like, he was a nice, to me. he was a nice guy. He wasn't mean. You know, it was like I had, you know, you know, we, we had lunch together. You know, the past, again, I was close to the pastor at the time. Uh, and, you know, took a picture with the guy and everything. And, and he even came back to our church again the following year. But, you know, the same theme that was at JP's church, you know, was at ours. Prosperity gospel, promoting his books, talking about all of his money. I'm a very rich, I'm a very wealthy man, right? I got a lot of, I got a, a big mansion there in Nolens. And the Lord has been so good to me. But if you just continue to give, you know, he could do the same for you that he did for me. You just, again, I was blinded at the time. Not physically yet, partially, yes, but spiritually blinded 100%. These are wolves. And they think that they are above everybody else and that they have some sort of, you know, special healing power because of who they are and their name and who they're associated with. Kenneth Copeland and, and Creflo Dalla and Bill Winston and all these people like T.D. Jakes. Uh, but they are nothing more than con men. I will tell you that. And look, and I know there are people that will always worship these pastors no matter what. And that's sad. You know, it took me a long time, a very long time to come out from under the spell. If it could happen for me, it can happen for many others. And there's people saying, well, you're still not physically restored to your sight yet. Yeah, and I don't know what God's plan is for that. I know that his will is that I will be perfectly healed and made whole. Whether that happens in this life or the next, I don't know. But what I can tell you, I am thankful that I have spiritual sight. I did not have it back then. And while I was... Physically losing my, I was losing my physical sight. You know, eventually I regained my spiritual sight. So I am thankful for that, that I can now see in that realm. Because I sure wouldn't want to be where I was. Maybe I still had some physical sight left, but I was so spiritually, I had no spiritual sight. I was lost in that. I was blindly trusting man putting my faith all in man, being stuck behind curtains to see Jesse Duplantis and, and everything else and listening to this guy as if he was the if he was Christ himself. He's not. There's still a lot of people that worship this guy and they always will. It won't matter what I say. It won't matter what others try to tell them to warn them, but they will still blindly worship these people. So again, I just want to tie in my own little story there with Jesse uh, as knowing who this guy is and again, talk about him there at Solid Rock, you know. Interestingly enough, you don't hear Jay or you don't hear Jesse coming out now anywhere talking about you know JP and and how maybe he shouldn't have been at Solid Rock and all that. Not saying any of that at all. Interesting. Remember, I know how to hide a body. Yikes! All right, <laughs> gone on long enough. I want to hear from you. You guys can let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I, I will put that link for you in the description. You can see some of those clips from uh, Jesse's sermon at Solid Rock. What I, also, don't forget, if you do enjoy and appreciate my work, you can always, remember, no prosperity gospel attached here. Just if you like what I do, you want to help me out, you can hit the super thanks button on the YT video or join my Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing here in the church, exposing the wolves that occupy its pulpits. We always want to give people that opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, for anybody watching now, if you are somebody who has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior and you would like to do so, I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. 
Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.